This is the lecture for section 4.3, Irreducibles and Unique Factorization. In this section, we want to introduce the analog of prime numbers in the polynomial ring f bracket x along with prime factorization. Recall that a prime number is an integer p not equal to 0 or plus or minus 1 whose only divisors are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus p. Note that plus or minus 1 are the units in z, while plus or minus p are the integers obtained by multiplying p by a unit. The analog of a prime number in the polynomial ring f bracket x will be an irreducible polynomial, a polynomial p of x whose only divisors are the units in f bracket x and the polynomials obtained by multiplying p of x by a unit. Before we can introduce irreducible polynomials, we first introduce some additional terminology that applies to elements in rings. For our first definition, let R be a commutative ring with identity, let B be an element of R, and element A in R is an associate of B, provided that A is equal to BU for some unit U in R. As a property of associates, we have this first remark, let R be a commutative ring with identity, and let A and B be elements of R, and let's suppose that A is an associate of B. Then there exists a unit u in R such that A is equal to BU. Since u is a unit, then there exists a multiplicative inverse, u inverse of u and R. Multiplying both sides of the equation A equal BU by u inverse, we obtain A u inverse is BU times u inverse, which is equal to B on the right side. Since u is the multiplicative inverse of u inverse, then u inverse is also a unit. And this equation, a u inverse equal b, implies b is an associate of a. Thus, a is an associate of b if and only if b is an associate of a. So this relationship of being an associate is actually symmetric. For our first example, what are the associates of an integer n in the ring of integers z? Well, the only units in z that is, the only elements with multiplicative inverses are plus or minus 1. Therefore, the associates of an integer n are plus or minus 1 times n, which is equal to plus or minus n. So each integer n, other than 0, has exactly two associates, itself and its negative. For another example, let's let f be a field and then we can ask what are the associates of a polynomial f of x in the ring f bracket x. By corollary 4.5, the units in f bracket x are the non-zero constant polynomials. Therefore, the associates of a polynomial f of x are the non-zero constant multiples of f of x, or c f of x for any c and f, c not equal to zero. So a polynomial will have infinitely many associates, depending upon the, whether the field itself is infinite or not. According to the definition, a non-zero integer p is prime in z provided that it is not plus or minus 1, that is, p is not a unit in z, and its only divisors are plus or minus 1, which are the units in z, and plus or minus p, which are the associates of p and z. By analogy with this definition, we can define prime elements in the polynomial ring f bracket x. And so now we're ready to define what we mean by an, a prime polynomial or an irreducible polynomial. Let f be a field. A non-constant polynomial p of x in f bracket x is said to be irreducible, provided that its only divisors are its associates and the non-zero constant polynomials or units. A non-constant polynomial that is not irreducible is said to be reducible. And so as we'll see in this section, this gives us a definition which is analogous to the definition for prime numbers. And if you notice, the definition exactly corresponds to our definition of prime numbers. Now, every polynomial of degree 1 in f bracket x is irreducible in f bracket x. To prove this, 
Let's suppose f of x is an arbitrary polynomial of degree 1 in our polynomial ring f bracket x. We need to show that f of x is irreducible in f bracket x. To do this using the definition, suppose d of x is an arbitrary divisor of f of x, we then need to show that d of x is either a unit or an associate of f of x. So according to the definition, a polynomial is irreducible provided that its only divisors are the units or its associates. Now since d of x divides f of x, then according to the definition of divides, f of x is equal to d of x times g of x for some polynomial g of x in f bracket x. Theorem 4.2 then implies that the degree of f of x, which is 1, is equal to the sum of the degrees in the product, so the degree of d of x plus the degree of g of x. Since degrees are non-negative, this implies that either d, the degree of d of x is 0 or the degree of g of x is 0, and the other is 1. In the case that the degree of d of x is 0, then d of x is a non-zero constant polynomial, which means that d of x is a unit. In the case that the degree of g of x is 0, then g of x is a non-zero constant polynomial, which means that g of x is a unit. And since g of x is a unit and f of x is equal to d of x times g of x, it then follows that d of x is an associate of f of x. Therefore, every divisor of f of x is either a unit or an associate, which implies that f of x is irreducible. And this proves the remark. Now, whether or not a polynomial is irreducible depends not only upon the polynomial itself, but also the underlying field for the polynomial ring. As an example of this, the polynomial x squared plus 1 is reducible in C bracket x, where C is the field of complex numbers, but irreducible in Q bracket x, where Q is the field of rational numbers. We can see that x squared plus 1 is reducible by just factoring it. So this factors in C bracket x as x plus i times x minus i, where i is the square root of negative 1. So both x plus i and x minus i are divisors. Neither of these is a unit, nor an associate, so this shows that x squared plus 1 is reducible in C bracket x. The proof that x squared plus 1 is irreducible in Q bracket x is one of the homework problems in this section. For our first theorem, let f be a field. For all non-zero polynomials f of x in f bracket x, f of x is reducible in f bracket x, if and only if f of x can be written as the product of two polynomials of lower degree. So what this is saying is that a polynomial is reducible if you can factor it non-trivially. So you can write it as a product of two polynomials where neither one of them has the same degree as f of x. To prove this, this is a biconditional, so we have to prove the forward and backward directions. And we'll start with the forward direction. The backward direction will actually be a homework exercise for the section. So to prove the forward direction, start by supposing f, f of x is an arbitrary non-zero polynomial in f bracket x. Suppose f of x is reducible. We then need to show that f of x can be written as the product of two polynomials of lower degree. Now since f of x is reducible, then it has a divisor g of x in f bracket x that is neither a unit nor an associate. Now since g of x divides f of x, then f of x is equal to g of x times h of x for some h of x in f bracket x. We then have f of x written as the product of two polynomials. We just need to show that both g of x and h of x have lower degree than f of x. To show this, we can use a proof by contradiction. Suppose one of g of x and h of x has the same degree as f of x. We then need to derive a contradiction. We then have two cases to consider. In each case, we need to derive a contradiction. So for case one, let's suppose that the degree of g of x is equal to the degree of f of x. Since f of x is equal to g of x times h of x, then by theorem 4.2, the degree of f of x is equal to the degree of g of x plus the degree of h of x. Then the degree of g of x equal degree of f of x implies that the degree of h of x must be zero. 
which implies that h of x is a non-zero constant polynomial, which means that h of x is a unit. It then follows that g of x is an associate of f of x, which is a contradiction. For case 2, suppose the degree of h of x is equal to the degree of f of x. This implies that the degree of g of x is 0, which implies that g of x is a non-zero constant polynomial, which means that g of x is a unit, which is again a contradiction. So we've derived a contradiction in both cases, therefore both g of x and h of x have lower degree than f of x. And this proves the forward direction. As an example of an application of this theorem, we can show that f of x equal x squared plus x plus 1 is irreducible in z sub 2 bracket x. According to the theorem, to show that f of x equal x squared plus x plus 1 is irreducible in z2 bracket x, we can show that it cannot be written as the product of two polynomials of lower degree. Since the degree of f of x is 2, a product of two polynomials of lower degree would consist of a product of two polynomials both with degree 1. So to show f of x is irreducible, it suffices to show it cannot be written as the product of two polynomials of degree 1, that is, of two linear polynomials. Now the only linear polynomials in z2 bracket x are x and x plus 1 then the, on, the only possible products of two of these are x times x, which is x squared, x times x plus 1, which is x squared plus x, and x plus 1 times x plus 1, which is x squared plus 1. Since none of these equal our polynomial f of x equal x squared plus x plus 1, this shows that f of x cannot be written as the product of two polynomials of lower degree. And thus, f of x is irreducible. Now the following theorem shows that irreducible polynomials have properties similar to those for primes. Let f be a field and p of x a non-constant polynomial in f bracket x. Then the following conditions are equivalent. Our first condition is that p of x is irreducible. Our second, for any polynomials b of x and c of x, if p of x divides the product b of x, c of x, then p of x divides b of x, or p of x divides c of x. So if p of x divides a product of two polynomials, it must divide one or the other. And three, for any polynomials r of x and s of x, if p of x is equal to the product r of x times s of x, then r of x or s of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. To prove the theorem, we'll use our standard approach for proving theorems of this type. We'll show that 1 implies 2, 2 implies 3, and 3 implies 1. So we'll start with 1 implies 2. So we'll suppose 1 holds. That is, suppose that p of x is irreducible. We then need to show 2, which is for all b of x, for all c of x, p of x implies b of x times c of x implies that p of x divides b of x or p of x divide, divides c of x. So to prove this, suppose b of x and c of x are arbitrary polynomials in our polynomial ring. Suppose the hypothesis p of x divides b of x times c of x. We then need to show the conclusion that p of x divides b of x or p of x divides c of x. Now let's consider the GCD d of x of p of x and b of x. Since d of x is a divisor of p of x and p of x is irreducible, then either d of x is a unit or d of x is an associate of p of x. We then have two cases. In each case, we need to prove our conclusion, which is that p of x divides b of x or p of x divides c of x. For case 1, suppose d of x is a unit. Since the GCD is monic, then d of x is actually equal to the multiplicative identity 1 sub f. Since p of x divides b of x times c of x, and our GCD d of x is 1, then theorem 4.10 implies that p of x must divide the other factor c of x. And so this proves our conclusion and proves case 1. For case 2, we'll suppose that d of x is an associate of p of x. 
Now, since d of x is an associate of p of x, then we know that p of x divides d of x. Since d of x divides b of x, it follows by transitivity that p of x divides b of x. And this proves case 2. And this completes the proof of 1 implies 2. Now for 2 implies 3, we'll suppose that 2 holds. We then need to show that 3 holds, where 3 is for all r of x, for all s of x, p of x equal to r of x, s of x, implies that r of x or s of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. So suppose r of x and s of x are arbitrary polynomials in f bracket x. Suppose our hypothesis, p of x equals r of x times s of x. We then need to show our conclusion that r of x or s of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. Now since p of x equals r of x times s of x by our hypothesis, then p of x divides r of x times s of x. Then 2 implies that p of x divides r of x or p of x divides s of x. This gives us two cases. So for case 1, we'll suppose that p of x divides r of x. This implies that r of x equals p of x times v of x for some v of x. And substituting this into the previous equation for p of x, we obtain p of x equals the quantity p of x times v of x, that's our r of x, times s of x. Now since f is a field, then the polynomial ring f bracket x is an integral domain by corollary 4.3. So by theorem 3.7, we can cancel p of x from both sides of this equation to obtain 1 sub f on the left and v of x, s of x on the right. And this equation implies that s of x is a unit. So by corollary 4.5, s of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. And this proves our conclusion in case 1. So for case 2, we'll suppose that p of x divides s of x. And a similar proof in this case shows that r of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. And so this completes the proof of 2 implies 3. Finally, we'll look at the proof of 3 implies 1. So we'll suppose that 3 holds, that is, for any r of x and s of x, if p of x equals r of x times s of x, then r of x or s of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. And we need to show 1, that p of x is irreducible. To prove that p of x is irreducible, we need to show its only divisors are the units and its associates. So let's suppose that c of x is an arbitrary divisor of p of x. We then need to show that c of x is either a unit or an associate of p of x. Now since c of x divides p of x, then there exists a d of x such that p of x equals c of x times d of x. By 3, this implies that either c of x or d of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. This gives us two cases. In both cases, we need to show that c of x is a unit or an associate of p of x. So for case 1, we'll suppose that c of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. And by corollary 4.5, this implies that c of x is a unit. And so this proves case 1. For case 2, we'll suppose that d of x is a non-zero constant polynomial. Then d of x is equal to a constant a for some a and f, a not equal to the zero element. And since a is not equal to the zero element, then a inverse exists. Then p of x equal c of x times d of x is equal to a times c of x, which implies that c of x is a inverse times p of x which implies that c of x is an associate of p of x. And this proves case 2. And this completes the proof of 3 implies 1, and completes the proof of the theorem. Now the result 1 implies 2 from the theorem can be generalized to products of more than two polynomials. And so we have the corollary, let f be a field, for all a1, a2, up through a sub n, and p in f bracket x, if p of x is an irreducible polynomial in f bracket x, 
and p of x divides the product a1, a2, up through a sub n, then p of x divides at least one of the a sub i of x. Now we want to talk about unique factorization. So the next theorem is the analog of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic for polynomials. Let f be a field. Every non-constant polynomial f of x in f bracket x is a product of irreducible polynomials in f bracket x. And this factorization is unique in the following sense. If f of x can be factored as p1, p2, up through p sub r, and also can be factored as q1, q2, up through q sub s, with each p of p sub i of x and q sub j of x being irreducible, then first off, r is equal to s, that is, the number of irreducible factors is the same, and after reordering and relabeling the q sub j of x if necessary, then we can conclude that each p sub i of x is an associate of q sub i of x, for each i equal 1 through r. So the irreducible factors don't have to be identical, but they do have to be associates of one another. Now, as we did with integers, we allow products to have a single factor. So an irreducible polynomial is a product of irreducible polynomials with a single factor, namely itself. To prove the theorem, we need to prove both the existence of a factorization as a product of irreducible polynomials and the uniqueness of the factorization. We'll do the existence proof only. And we'll use a proof by contradiction. Suppose there exists a non-constant polynomial in f bracket x that is not a product of irreducible polynomials in f bracket x. We then need to derive a contradiction. We want to apply the well-ordering axiom to do the proof. So we're going to start by defining t to be the set of all polynomials in f bracket x that are not products of irreducibles. So t is the set of all f of x in f bracket x, such that f of x is not a product of irreducibles. And define s, s to be the set of degrees of polynomials in t. So s is the set of all degree of f of x, where f of x ranges over the polynomials in t. So the polynomials in t, remember, are the ones that are not products of irreducibles. So then s is a subset of the set of non-negative integers. And by our hypothesis, t is non-empty, which implies that s is non-empty. The well-ordering axiom then implies that s has a smallest element. This means there is a polynomial f of x in t such that f of x is not a product of irreducibles, and f of x has the smallest degree among all such polynomials. Now, since f of x is not a product of irreducibles, then f of x is, it, is not itself irreducible. Therefore, f of x is reducible, which by theorem 4.11 implies that f of x can be written as the product of two polynomials of lower degree. This tells us that there exist polynomials g of x and h of x, such that f of x is equal to g of x times h of x, and the degree of g of x is strictly less than the degree of f of x, and the degree of h of x is also strictly less than the degree of f of x. Now, since g of x and h of x both have degrees less than f of x, and f of x has the smallest degree among all polynomials in t, then our g of x and h of x cannot belong to t. This implies that both g of x and h of x are products of irreducibles. But then f of x equal g of x times h of x implies that f of x is also a product of irreducibles. And this is a contradiction. And this proves the existence part of the theorem holds.